Welcome everybody to the session this morning on fungal feet infection. My name is Jill Sykes and I'm a podiatrist and a coalition member of the Legs Matter Group. This is our final day today, the last push. I hope that you all really enjoy this presentation on fungal feet. The presentation is recorded but I am here live at the session and I'll be here at the end for live questions and answers. So I'd like to start the presentation now. Hi, my name is Jill Sykes and I'm a podiatrist for Harrogate and District Foundation Trust. I've been a podiatrist for over 30 years and a trustee for the TVS for over 10. And I've been a member on the Legs Matter group for just over a year now. So my remit today is to talk about fungal feet. Fungal infection of both skin and nails of the feet are caused by microscopic organisms, only in this case they are fungi, and like their counterparts, bacteria and viruses, uh, they are vis they're not visible to the naked eye. They exist everywhere in the atmosphere and many of our general day-to-day -day surroundings. 70% of the population may be affected at some point in their life. They flourish most in dark, moist, warm environments, attacking human skin and nails, particularly at times of mild debility or when the skin is damaged and therefore susceptible to invasion. They are common in conditions affecting approximately 10 to 15% of the population and are most common in males. So the signs and symptoms the most typical fungal infection of the skin is known as athlete's foot, or by its medical name, tinea pedis. Its name is a reference to the plimsolls or pumps footwear worn by athletes, which provided the perfect environment for the growth of the fungi involved. Athlete's foot most commonly affects the skin between the toes usually the fourth and fifth toes and the third and fourth toes and or on the bottom of the foot. It causes peeling, redness, itching and sometimes a burning sensation as well as blisters. So the assessment of suspected fungal foot infection as podiatrists should include asking the patient about the nature, the site and the duration of their symptoms, any previous treatments that the patient has undertaken, any close contacts with family or relatives, and a thorough medical history. We need to examine the pattern, the extent, and the severity of the infection, and for any associated inflammation or fungal infection of any of the sites of the body. We need to arrange for a skin scraping for fungal microscopy and culture if there is a severe or extensive disease in adults or that the diagnosis is quite uncertain. Other conditions that may persist similarly to fungal foot infection as a differential diagnosis would include an allergic or irritant contact dermatitis. This is often characterised by a redness and a demarcated rash whose distribution may match footwear, where an external agent such as rubber, glues or dyes acts as an allergen or irritant. Chronic involvement may produce skin dryness and fissuring, cracks in the skin. Typically, the skin between the toes is generally spared. Diagnosis can be confirmed by a simple lab test, which can ascertain for certain whether the problem is a fungal one or not, or if there is any other cause. So where do we catch a fungal infection from? These fungi are very contagious, and the most common source of infection are communal showers and bathing facilities in leisure centres and swimming pools though they can also be contracted by barefoot activity on dry floors, such as the use in the gymnasium. Common site, as we've mentioned before, is in between the toes, 
And from this photograph, we can see that the, the rash extends not just between the fourth and fifth and third and fourth, but also onto the top of the toes and is starting to involve the, the second and third interdigital site. This is generally very sore. So prevention. It's frequently said that prevention is better than cure. And as podiatrists, we use that term and phraseology all the time. And this is very true. Here are some tips to help you avoid these fungal infections. The first and obvious one is good daily foot hygiene. The feet should be washed in warm, soapy water, then rinsed before carefully drying, paying particular attention to the skin between the toes. Dusting afterwards with a medicated towel containing a mild, mild antifungal agent is beneficial and ensures that you do not that you do not cause resistance to any other agents that may be needed for an infection at a later date. Also, if your toes are very tight together, this reduces the natural airflow between them and makes the skin more vulnerable. The use of a little surgical spirit between the toes at bedtime can work wonders. A cotton wool bud is a useful applicator. Leave the spirit to vaporise after the application and this will act as an astringent to the skin at the same time to remove any residual moisture from the day's activities. However, at side of caution, please make sure the skin is intact before you apply surgical spirit, otherwise it will be extremely sore. Athlete's foot is a common fungal infection that affects the feet. As we've said before, it's highly contagious. You can usually treat it with creams, sprays or powders from the pharmacy, but it can keep returning and coming back. It can affect both hands and feet and the toenails and the fingernails, either one nail or multiple nails or all the nails. A lot of the time, fungal infections in toenails are asymptomatic. They're not painful, just, just not very nice to look at. Treatment is generally not recommended for fungally infected toenails, which are asymptomatic. How do you get athlete's foot? Basically, catch athlete's foot from other people with the infection. As we've said before, changing room and swimming pool sides, I cannot stress enough. And touching the affected skin of somebody that already has athlete's foot. You're more likely to get athlete's foot if you have wet or sweaty feet or the skin on your feet is damaged and open. That means there's a portal of entry for the fungal infection. Always examine between your toes. Make sure they're completely dry. This, this picture on this foot shows the skin on the third toe has got a secondary infection. This has got a bacterial infection as well as the fungal infection. And generally, if not controlled, that would mean antibiotics as well. One of the main symptoms is itchy, really, really itchy skin with white patches between your toes. It can also cause sore and flaky patches on your feet as well. The skin can look red, but this may be less noticeable on brown or black skin. Maceration, this is a terminology podiatrists use for soggy skin. As we can see, the skin has gone very, very moist. The whiteness in the skin there is peeling and there is no chance of any healing while the skin is in, in such a, a soggy condition. And this is as podiatrists we call maceration. It can also appear dry. We can see there what we call a dry fissure between the toes there. So we've got callous and dry skin on top of a little fissure like a groove in the skin. This all needs cleaning back to expose and assess what's underneath there and then to be able to apply any medicament to that wound bed. This is what we call a wet fissure. So again, this is where we get this extra moisture. And literally that is a split in the skin. 
these are very hard to heal. As podiatrists, they're a nightmare to heal. But the prevention is better than those developing. So keeping the skin very, very dry in between those toes. Not adding moisture to those areas between the toes, i.e. creams and emollients and things like that. And making sure that you dry really, really well with your towel. Athlete's foot can also affect the, your soles or sides of your feet. In some cases, we do see fluid filled blisters, little pustules that develop around the sole or the inner arch of the foot. And if it's not treated, the infection can spread to your toenails and cause the fungally infected toenail. Generally, a patient that comes in with a fungally infected toenail has had a previous history of athlete's foot over the years. This is a great photograph of tinea pedis on the inner arch of the foot and underneath the sole. And you can see right underneath the sole there, the small yellow pustules that develop, which are ever so itchy and irritable. The infection can, as we said, spread to your toenails. The infection of the nails is called onychomycosis, and is quite often the complication of what was originally untreated or inadequately treat, treated skin, such as the athlete's foot. The nails appear thickened and discoloured and frequently have a crumbly texture. However, not all nail symptoms like this are due to fungal infection. There are many other conditions which cause a similar appearance, such as poor circulation to the nail bed or psoriasis of the nails, etc. This is a fungally infected toenail. So you can see the yellow discoloration that comes underneath the nail plate. Generally, that is asymptomatic and not painful and will normally stay as it is, or it could become painful and start to spread. This is an elderly patient, again with a fungal infection in the toenails. This is also asymptomatic. And however, with the, the poor circulation, this nail is very thick, very crumbly and brown discoloration underneath the nail. Generally, the patients are quite happy without receiving any form of treatment. Bane of my life, nail varnish. Nail varnish on toenails looks super pretty in summertime, but not so good for the toenails. Nail varnish worn for prolonged periods of time can cause fungally infected toenails. Please be aware, don't wear your toenail varnish all year round. Give your toenails a break during winter months when they're generally covered up anyway and not exposed. Give the nails chance to recover. A pharmacist can help you with athlete's foot. Athlete's foot is unlikely to get better on its own, but you can buy topical antifungal medicines for it from the pharmacy counter. They usually take a few weeks to work. And athlete foot treatments are also available in creams, sprays and powder. They are not suitable for everyone. For example, some are only for adults and always check the packet or ask a pharmacist. You might need to try a few treatments to find out which one works best for you. The following applications are recommended for the treatment of fungal foot infection. Tabedafine 1% cream for children over 12 years old it can be thinly applied to the affected area once or twice a day for up to seven days. Clotrimazole 1% cream is another cream that you apply to the affected area two to three times a day and continue for at least four weeks. A strip of cream about half a centimetre long is enough to treat an area about the size of your hand. So use it very sparingly, very thinly on the skin. How to treat and prevent athletes but yourself? You can keep using pharmacy treatments to stop athlete's foot coming back. It's also important to keep your feet clean and dry. You do not need to stay off work or school. 
So the dude, dry your feet after we wash them, as we've said, particularly as we've said between the toes, dab them dry rather than rubbing them. Use a separate towel for your feet and wash it regularly. Take your shoes off when you get home and wear clean socks every day, preferably cotton socks and not man-made socks. Don't scratch your affected skin, which can spread it to other parts of your body. Do not walk around barefoot. Wear flip-flops in places like changing rooms and showers and, and swimming pool sides. I always wear flip-flops anyway. Do not share towels, socks or shoes with any other people. Do not wear the same pair of shoes more than two days in a row. And do not wear shoes that make your feet feel hot and sweaty. It's important to keep following this advice after finishing treatment to help stop the athlete's foot coming back and doing the same cycle over and over again. So footwear. Footwear is very important in prevention of athlete's foot. During summer, especially, and our feet perspire more, be careful, especially with man-made materials, such as plastic or rubber, which make your feet perspire more. Patients in an occupation wearing enclosed footwear, such as Wellington boots and steel toe cap boots, are more prone to athlete's foot. Some examples here of footwear that we try and avoid as much as we can. Some people are in occupations where they need to wear these, such as farmers, builders, uh, legislation, and operating theatres, nurses, etc. So it's good advice around prevention of sweating feet. Surgical spirit are a really good idea for these sort of occupations. So what can we do? As we said, try and avoid man-made uppers and soiled footwear. Wear leather uppers where possible, which will allow the feet to breathe. Dry both feet well, especially between the toes. And apply surgical spirit to intact skin. I stress intact skin every two or three days, especially in hot weather with a cotton wool ball or bud. This will dry the skin up and prevent sweating and moisture collection, especially between the toes. So contact your GP or podiatrist if treatments from a pharmacy do not work, you are in a lot of discomfort, your foot or leg is hot, painful and red, the redness be less noticeable on brown or black skin, this could be a more serious bacterial infection. The, if the infection spreads to other parts of your body, such as your hands, if you have diabetes, foot problems can be more serious if you have diabetes, if you have a weakened immune system. For example, you, have organ, you are on an organ transplant or you have chemotherapy. Treatment for athlete's foot from a podiatrist means we can spend a scraping of your skin from your feet or a clipping of your toenail to a laboratory to check if you have athlete's foot. We can advise you on a particular treatment if clinically indicated. We can look at, at a differential diagnosis, i.e. could it be something else? We could refer you to a dermatologist if required. And we could also review you after a period of time, if necessary. Treatment for athletes foot from a GP. Your GP may also be able to send a small scraping of your, from your feet, of your skin, to the lab to check that you have athletes foot. They can prescribe a steroid cream, a mild steroid cream, to use along, alongside the antifungal cream. They can prescribe you antifungal tablets in severe cases, but you might need to take these for quite a long period of time. And they also 
may be able to refer you to a skin specialist, a dermatologist, for more tests and treatment if needed. So don't forget, prevention in this case with athlete's foot is much, much better than cure. We're standing up for legs and feet. Will you? Hi there, so I hope you enjoyed that session and it was quite informative for you either as clinicians or just, just a patient really. We've had a few comments made on the chat. One was around uh, surgical spirit, um, being an old wives tale, Leanne put a remark on about surgical spirit. In actual fact, there are quite a few old wives tales about the treatment of feet. Um, however, surgical spirit is not one of those. Surgical, surgical spirit is a really good astringent. That is very good as well for preventing blistering. So for instance, if you're, you're a long distance runner, a lot of marathon runners put surgical spirit onto their feet before they start running and training. And that helps to astringe the skin and, and prevent some of the blistering from coming. Obviously, they need good trains and good footwear. So surgical spirit is not an old wise tale. Also, Leanne's put on about Crocs. She thought they were good footwear. However, um, I do notice during the wards and hospital here at Scarborough that a lot of the nursing staff and some of the theatre staff wear croc shoes. Crocs are not good for the feet, not long term, not for working in. Um, they tend to allow the feet to perspire because of the nature of the rubber that they're made of. And also they're very, very broad. If you've got a broad foot, it'll be like wearing slippers for work. However, it allows that foot to, to really be broad and then not go into decent footwear, you'll then start having other problems. So crocs are not recommended long-term things. Going out to the garden and maybe the bin, which is what I do, crocs are brilliant for. The other thing was around clitoris as well. Um, she, Eliane was saying she had no experience with tyrabedafine. Um, really, it's finding what is best for that patient or for yourselves if you're using it yourself. So really, again, you can use combination. You can also um, use them on their own, whichever works best for you. However, I would recommend personally with my clinical experience over the years is that I avoid creams between the toes. So using a spray between the toes, preferably. Uh, creams, as we mentioned in the presentation, will donate moisture. So you'll, you'll find that it will add moisture to that. For all, it is medicated. So I, I've generally found that creams for athletes' foot are better for the skin areas on the soles of the feet, like some of the uh, slides showed previously. Um, so avoid, avoid that. And talcum powder, any powders between the toes, just be careful that you're not clogging the skin between the toes, that the, the powder's not settling into that real cleft in between the toes there and causing more of an issue. So somebody also put on the chat around Veruca and what the difference is between that and athlete's foot. Now, the Veruca is a viral infection and obviously athlete's foot, as we've mentioned, is the fungal infection. However, Veruca do thrive on the similar situation of the moist environment. So again, it's swimming pool sides, gymnasium, things like that, where you're barefoot, doing barefoot activity. Somebody who has that viral infection, the same as, as athletes, but uh, is, is infecting the, the surrounding areas. So please be careful. Like I mentioned in my presentation, whenever I do anything barefoot, such as swimming, I always wear flip-flops. Leave them at poolside, just a nice cheap pair, and that's just enough barrier uh, to go into the changing rooms as well. It's fantastic. We've got another two chats popped up here. Um, uh, one of somebody's put my doctor told me I had eczema on my foot, but this just looks the same as the picture you showed. Is eczema and athletes foot the same? No, no, they're not the same. The best way to, to do is to have uh, skin scraping done that will determine whether there is that fungal element in in the skin infection so a, a small sample is taken that is sent off to the laboratory that can be done either by the gp stroke practice nurse or podiatry if you are already seeing a podiatrist they'll quite happily do that for you in their clinical setting uh, it does take 
a few weeks for that result to come back, but that will determine then on the outcome of the treatment. It is hard to determine between expert and athlete's book, um, but generally athlete's book will, you'll have some sort of history as well of that. So what sort of sprays, Fiona's asked, what sort of sprays for in, in between the toes do you recommend? So the sprays, um, there are plenty of athletes put sprays on the market, my coat to my still. Um, it's just really a case going along to a good chemist and speaking to pharmacists again. But at the moment seem to be, uh, there'll be a queue for pharmacists. But there is a really generally good foot stand and there will be the sprays for the athletes that are available to you. I would recommend more the spray than the cream, Fiona, if that was best for you. Just to, like I said, to avoid that adding moisture between the toes. Let's see what else is in the, the chat again. If lamicillal antifungal doesn't seem to clear up a blistered fungal area, can I try clotrimazole before seeing the GP? Yes, yes do. Um, lamicillal is, is another fungal infection preparation. Um, I've not found lamicillal being very good for toenails. In fact, that I haven't found a lot of off-the-shelf product for um, fungal toenails being effective. Um, the GP would prescribe a tablet form um, for you, which, which is a long-term tablet. So that's really can have some liver function um, problems. You do have to have liver function blood tests when you're taking that tablet form. So we that's why we recommend really if toenails are asymptomatic, not painful, not bothering you, to leave them well alone. But as far as the skin goes, I would try different fungal preps if you've already tried Lamisil, and that's for Teresa. Okay, let me go back into the chat. Uh, is caniston cream any good? Yeah, caniston cream is really good. Caniston cream is something that, that again, is recommended generally for fungal infections all over the body. So you do need to, I would speak to your pharmacist before you actually um, are prescribed or given um, the caniston because there are different types of caniston for different areas of the body. But yes, caniston cream is very good. Daptarin is another one. There are plenty of different products there on the market for you. Okay, that looks like all my chats and questions covered for today. Um, obviously, I am available through the Legs Matter website. If anybody does have any more patient inquiries, that's absolutely fine. And I hope that this session has been informative for you. I would like to just do a little plug. Leanne Atkin is on at 10 o'clock. Uh, she's going to be talking about how to recognise problems with your arteries. So that will be a really interesting one to, to get tuned into. You can register online. This is our last day of Legs Matter. One last push. And thank you very much for attending. Bye now.